2009 was the number on my calendar, and also my scales. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond, and one of those memos pertains to fast food. Now look, I know that fast food is largely bad for you and leaves you with stinky farts, but the truth is, in both countries, fast food is everywhere. Of course, Britain acquired most of its fast food from the United States. Everywhere you go, you'll find a McDonald's, a Burger King, a KFC, or a Subway. Just wanted to make that clear in case Uncle Toby demands to know why those in particular didn't make today's list. But for all the influence that America has had on Britain's fast food, it was Britain that gave birth to the idea. As indicated by this plaque in England, the first recorded case of fast food anywhere in the world is said to be fish and or chips. And that was in the late 19th century. Fast forward to the 20th and America took the idea and ran with it. As a way to offer quick, on-the-go meals to America's workforce, during that 100 years, countless fast food restaurants formed at the regional level and successfully expanded like my stomach after three Whoppers. But before I moved to America, I didn't know about any of them. I had absolutely no idea how vast America's fast food choices were. And so let's take a look at eight fast food restaurants that I only encountered after moving to America, in reverse order of when they were founded. It's not just my British viewers that might be unfamiliar with a fast food outlet called Rallies. Depending on location, I suspect this might stump some Americans, and for different reasons. Number one, founded in Alabama in 1985, Rallies is mostly clustered east of the Mississippi. And number two, people in the southeast of the United States call it Checkers. Either way, it's a comical reference to motor racing. Get it? Our food is as fast as a racing car, and just as oily. For my part, my first encounter with rallies and or checkers was in Anderson, Indiana in 2009. And in this video, that's a time and place I should copy and paste. And I'm rather glad that rallies started in this video's inside lane because it's my least favorite on the list. And if you think I sound salty, you should see their fries. While I've not eaten here very often, I do have a bit of respect for Culver's. As fast food chains go, they're a little bit rebellious. Not only do they do the mushroom burger, but their branding colours go against the grain. Whereas all others took their cues from communist nations, Culver's took one look at Finland's flag and went, that'll do. On the other hand, this might also account for why it's never expanded beyond the United States. In fact, the bulk of its branches are in the Midwest, which partially accounts for why I've encountered it and why I did so in Anderson in 2009. Here's another case where I'm going to have to preempt Uncle Toby. Technically, I encountered Wendy's before moving to the United States. Founded in Columbus, Ohio in 1969, Wendy's first came to my attention during a trip to Boston in 2004. And I remember coming away from it thinking, ah, oh, that was a nice McDonald's knockoff that somebody in Boston created on this street. It was only after I moved to America that I realized the country had more Wendy's than it had people called Wendy. The funny thing is, and I only discovered this this week, it turns out that Wendy's, like Elvis Presley, did make some rare pit stops in Britain. In fact, just recently, the company announced that it's set to make a third attempt at cracking Britain after opening and closing stores in the 80s and early 2000s. Founded in Boardman, Ohio in 1964, Arby's would go on to become the favourite fast food chain of, and I quote, America's number one British import YouTube sensation Lawrence Brown. Of course, on that fateful day when I left London for the last time, I didn't know this yet. In fact, I wouldn't know it until my first Arby's encounter in Anderson in 2009. And yes, I moved to America in 2008, so in case you're wondering what I was doing for the first couple of months, I was getting used to the language. That said, the first time that I stuffed my mouth with one of their roast beef sandwiches, my first thought was, where have you been all my life? And the answer, I've just discovered, was London and Glasgow. It turns out in Britain in the early 1990s, two Arby's locations were open and subsequently closed within two years. Apparently an Arby's did open later in Southampton, but like the Titanic, it left Southampton and was never seen again. 
Close to Arby's in both its date of origin and every town in which it's situated, Taco Bell was launched in Downey, California in 1962. And the first thing I remember hearing about it after touching down in the US is that half of the country's population refers to it as Taco Hell. But again, I didn't know that yet. I was willing to put it in the same camp as Culver's, enamoured once more with its communist-crushing colour scheme. But if there's ever an instance where I've come to greatly prefer its sit-down equivalent, it's Taco Bell. My first encounter, you guessed it, was Anderson in 2009. My last encounter was Anderson in 2009. Since that time and since I've been living in America, Mexican-inspired food has been heating up all across Britain, to the extent that my homeland now now boasts and or tolerates 39 Taco Bells. I'm not sure if you've guessed yet, but this video is not sponsored by Taco Bell. What to say about Hardee's? It's fine, it's Wendy's Mark II, and I first encountered it in Anderson in 2009. I don't have much to add except to say that it was founded in North Carolina in 1960 and that the nation can't agree on its name. So just when I'd gotten used to the idea that America has a fast food outlet called Hardee's, I found myself in Idaho Falls. I was taking a walk in what could be described as its downtown area in search of food. All of a sudden, I happened upon a building that looked suspiciously like a Hardee's. It had the same color scheme, the same font, and the same creepy star. Except that I discovered that west of the Mississippi, they call it Carl's Jr. It turns out they're owned by the same parent company. Basically, they're sisters. Whatever it's calling itself, the restaurant has expanded overseas, just not to Britain. I'm going to take this moment to shock you, not literally. My first encounter with In-N-Out Burger was not in Anderson, Indiana. And that's because there is no In-N-Out Burger in Anderson, Indiana. And my first encounter came much later than 2009. In fact, I was 36 years old when I learned that the words burger and In-N-Out could even go together. It was in Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco where I first had the pleasure of eating one of their burgers. The main problem was the crowds because of whom I was not in and out as the name suggests. Unless that refers to the food's journey through my digestive system, in which case the company stayed true to its word. And so we arrive at White Castle. Seven words that, depending on the level of alcohol consumption, either fill you with hope or dread. Fittingly, once again, my first encounter was in Anderson. 2009 was the number on my calendar, and also my scales. Opened in Wichita, Kansas in 1921, White Castle is generally considered to be the first fast food hamburger chain. And personally, I absolutely love their sliders if I'm trashed. The only thing about them is the gas. On the night, you find yourself calling the drive through intercom. The next day, you find yourself calling FEMA. Of course, it's little surprise that I never encountered White Castle in Britain because while it has ventured overseas, it's never set foot in the British Isles. This is presumably because the market there is already dominated by actual castles and whoopee cushions. That's it for this episode. Thank you for joining me. Let me know in the comments below how much you detest fast food, but also which is your favourite fast food outlet. And if you really want to see an embarrassingly drunk picture of me from the 4th of July, why not follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US? And as ever, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. If you like what you see on this channel, why not consider supporting Lost in the Pond as more than 200 people continue to do? You can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until next time, I'm going to go and have my third slider and toilet break.